26 December 2024, videos emerged of two new Chinese fast jet combat aircraft making test flights. That the PLA was investigating a next generation aircraft without vertical stabilizers, think B-2 or B-21 bombers, was known for some time. That China would show two different new generation aircraft flying on the same day was not expected. Displaying the external features most expect from the next generation of fast jet combat aircraft, these large aircraft present some intriguing questions for analysts. One of the aircraft shown was from the Shenyang Aircraft Corporation. That the video was quickly and openly showed on the internet tells us this was likely a coordinated shaping and influencing exercise by China. With that in mind, it was very likely not the aircraft's first flight. What do we currently know or can reasonably deduce from recent videos of the J-50 and likely PLA thinking on employing this next generation combat aircraft? G'day and salutations. Today's briefing, an assessment of China's sixth generation combat aircraft from Shenyang Aircraft Corporation, the J-50. How might these aircraft be used operationally? For the purpose of this briefing, I'll use the name J-50 although JXD or JXDS might be more appropriate. 26 December 2024 was notable from a PLA Air Force watching perspective, not only from the more widely covered Chengdu Aircraft Corporation's J36, see so separate briefing linked in the description, but also the very intriguing J50. These are very different aircraft, which will be discussed later. Many watching this briefing will be aware of the design attributes I'm about to highlight. So for you, it's just a refresher before getting into the assessment of operational use. For others, this is an important primer. The most obvious initial feature is the lack of vertical stabilizers, reducing radar cross-section, reducing drag, and improving fuel efficiency. It has a distinctive lambda wing named after the Greek letter lambda in its lowercase form. The lambda plane form offers the high speed efficiency of delta wings but with better low speed handling. A novel feature are the all moving wing tips or tipperons, a control surface where the entire tip of the wing pivots, providing additional control authority in roll and yaw. These enhance maneuverability, particularly at high speeds, including rolling movements. In terms of the impact on stealth, the tipperons might result in a similar impact to the radar cross section as the canards on the J20 but only when in use. Now, some have suggested the J-50 has been developed as a carrier aircraft. While this may come to pass, currently there is no proof of this. In particular, there are no folding wings. If there was to be, the folding line would probably be located around here. Additionally, there is no tail hook. However, it is possible one could be located here. In terms of engines, at this stage, the engines are likely the WS-10Cs rated at between 140 and 150 kilonewtons or 32,000 to 34,000 pounds of thrust and likely with 2D thrust vector and control. In the future, we should expect the J-50s to be fitted with the WS-15s, which are likely to be in the 160 to 180 kilonewton range or 36,000 to 40,000 pounds. For reference, the F-119 engine in the F-22 puts out 156 kilonewtons or 35,000 pounds or 98 kilonewtons, 22,000 pounds of dry thrust. So with two high dry thrust engines together with the overall design, this should deliver high Mark 1 supercruise together with significant electrical power generation, critical in supporting its next generation avionics, sensors and EW systems. Further to the possibility that the J-50 is being developed as a carrier aircraft, is the adoption of the dual wheel nose landing gear configuration, but this in itself is not confirmation. Perhaps a more important issue has to do with the weapons loadout, in particular weapons bays. The main weapons bay appears roughly the same size as that of the J-20 and smaller than that of the J-36. Also, despite commentary by some, there is no proof of side or lateral weapons bays on the J-50 that can launch air-to-air -air missiles. The J-50 appears slightly bigger than the J-20 5th generation fighter, slightly longer than the J-15 4.5 generation carrier based fighter, but smaller than the J-36 6th generation fighter. It also has a very thick forward fuselage, 
seemingly plenty of space for a large nose radar as well as side arrays. So the J50 is very different to the J36, which has a very different plane form. Three engines instead of two is larger and heavier, resulting in a different main landing gear arrangement and a larger internal weapon spay capacity. Some have suggested the J36 will be developed into a carrier-based aircraft. I think this unlikely. And if the PLA is looking to develop a sixth generation carrier-based aircraft, which we should expect, then the J50 is a more likely candidate. Given its overall layout and design philosophy, the J50 is likely envisaged as primarily an air dominance aircraft, either working alongside the J36 when that aircraft is focused on strike missions, or working alone, but supported by ISR assets, in long range air dominance missions. A quick note before the summary, unlike the US Joint Strike Fighter or JSF program, which saw two designs, the X-32 and X-35, competing for one contract, it is very unlikely the J-50 is in competition with the J-36 for the same role within the PLA. In summary, the J-50 appears a big aircraft, larger than the J-20, but not as large as the J-36. The J-50, should it be brought into service, will likely be multi-role, able to carry standard size air-to-surface missiles internally, but with a focus on air dominance. It may be employed together with the J-36 in a strike package, given its stealth and flight profile capabilities, that is, all aspects stealth, long-range, high Mark one super crews, and without other aircraft compromising it, with the J-36 used in the strike role and the J-50 providing air cover. It might be developed as a carrier aircraft, as the carrier air wing's primary fighter, but this is not certain. Of course, what we have seen so far is a flying prototype, nothing more. What capabilities might it have in around five years' time when it enters initial production, if indeed it makes it that far? And then, what might it look like five years after that, when it reaches maturity? That concludes today's briefing. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, like and share, and don't forget to click the notification button so you don't miss the next briefing. You never know what it'll be about. Happy to take suggestions for future briefings from members. Until next time, Vale de Cerro.